A set is a collection of things. Such as pencils, places, people, etc. In mathematics, we use numbers or variables. Sets are going to be written in these curly braces, and no repetition is allowed. So if this set says one, two, three, four, I cannot write a set like this one, two, two, three, four, four, four. This is not allowed because there is any repetition. So if I wanted to change or add in multiple versions, I have to use some kind of subscript, for instance, like two sub one, two sub two. But um, in general, no repetition of exact things are allowed. There's three main methods we can talk about sets using the roster, which is just a list or a list. And this this uh, list says one, two, three, four, dot, 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 means you continue, continue the pattern indefinitely. That means that this is also going to have five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 50, all the way on up to positive infinity. The set builder notation, it gives you instructions on how to do it. So this is read as X such that um, X is between three and 10. It can equal 10, but not equal three. And X is an even number. That means I can rewrite this set using the roster method by just listing out the elements. The first even number in this range is four, then six, then eight, and X can equal 10, and that's it. So a set builder and the roster, uh, in, in this case, the roster is easier. I wrote the set builder this way, however, so you can see how it works. The declaration, of course, uh, is just the English description of a set, the set of positive odd numbers. I can rewrite this as the set. The first positive odd number is one. So then we have one, three, five, seven, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, etc., all the way up to positive infinity. Now, these sets have operations. Before we can do an operation, we need to have a zero for a set, and this is called the empty set. It's just a set with no elements. It's written with a zero with a line through it, or as two curly braces with no elements inside of the set. Okay, so we're, when we're going to be doing these operations, it's important to um, visualize it kind of in your mind. A helpful way of doing that is a Venn diagram, and then each circle in the Venn diagram is just a set that you're talking about. I, I will show you that using this in, in our first operation, which is the union. The union is asking, what's the most I can have? You're taking everything you can from each set possible. So let's go ahead and draw these sets um, as a uh, Venn diagram. Uh, it's important to note which elements are in common in both sets. We have four and seven and 15 in both of these. So I'm gonna write the first set like this, 100 and then four, seven, 15. And I can just draw a circle around that. There's my first set. The next one is 1.3 i, and of course, 4, 7, and 15. So the union is as much as possible. It's going to be everything in the first set, so all of this stuff, along with this stuff, and then everything in the second set, so all of this stuff too. So it's pretty much everything that's contained in the circles. Now it's important to note that, that sets never repeat. So our union is going to be, I'm just going to start at the left and go to the right, 100, 4, 7, 15, 1.3, and pi. I did not write 4, 7, and 15 twice because there is no repetition allowed in the sets. And this is our union. For this next one, we have the set negative 2.517, 0, and 1 fifth. And then we have the empty set. 
the empty set is just a set with no elements, so I'm just going to create a circle with nothing on the inside of it. So the union is as much as possible from both sets. That's going to be all of this stuff and this stuff, but there's nothing in there, so that's not going to really add anything. Therefore, the union is just uh, 2.517, 0, and 1 fifth. It's kind of similar to something like 3 plus 0 is 3. The, the uh, empty set didn't add anything to the union, um, so you just get the um, first set there. Okay, give this a try in number 1. The next operation we're going to be looking at is the intersection. And this is what is in common or in both sets. It's very easy to see the intersection in a Venn diagram, um, but the idea is the same no matter what, if you're looking at just the uh, set notation or the Venn diagram, it's what's in common. So for this first set, let's go ahead and uh, draw this out. We get 4, 15, 100, and 7. And then the second set is this guy here. And of course, the thing that's in common is the overlap or the intersection of the two sets. And the only thing that's in both is 7. Instead of drawing the Venn diagram, you can just look here. Well, we have 4, 7, 5, 15, 100, 1.3, 8.496, 7, and pi. 7's in both, which means it's going to be in the intersection. Everything else is thrown away. We do not care about anything else. Now, for this next one, we have the empty set, so a set with no elements. And then we have negative 1, 0, 1. And then what's the overlap? Well, the empty set has, no, has nothing in it, so there can be no overlap. Therefore, there is no elements in common in both the empty set and negative 1, 0, 1. So the answer is the empty set. It's a set with no elements in it. There, there's nothing to put in there, so it's just the empty set. You can also think of this as like, well, there is an overlap, but the overlap is the the nothingness so to speak of the empty set so um, it's just the empty set again either way it works for your thinking okay give this a try in number two the last operation we're going to be looking at is the complement and this is kind of the idea of opposites uh, in the sets. In order to talk about this, however, we have to have a universe set normally labeled U, because to have an opposite of some set, you have to have, well, what can be on the outside of, it, of that set? And the only way you can have that is to define, this is the universe we're talking about. So uh, for us, of course, the universe is gonna be a set of numbers. Uh, in this case, I have the universe set is the numbers from negative 100 to positive 100. No decimal numbers in there. And A is the set of all negative numbers. Of course, this is contained in U. So A is going to be the set negative 100, negative 99, negative 98, all the way up to negative 1. And that's it because those are the only negative numbers in our universe that we're working in. Of course, B is negative 50 to positive 50. And with that in mind, we can look at these four operations. So first off, let me draw out, um, just draw this in a certain way, um, the universe set A and B. So the universe set was negative 100 to positive 100. I'm going to write it like this because I think it clearly um, labels it here for Venn diagram purposes. Oops. So 
Okay, and this is our universe set. Typically, I'm gonna write that as a box and then put U on the outside. And once again, this is just the numbers negative 100 to 100. I wrote this in a special way so that the visualization is a little bit clearer. And A, set A, was the sets um, from uh, all the negative numbers. So set A is going to be this red set. So it's going to be this one right here. And set B was the numbers negative 50 to positive 50. So in blue, that's going to be this set. This is B. And with that, we can um, find these four uh, expressions here. So A complement, that's what this, this uh, first part is saying, A complement is just everything that's not in A. It's the opposite of A, always contained within the universe set. So everything that's not in A is going to be the zero and all the positive numbers. I'm going to draw that here in green. This is A complement. And you can see between A and A complement, there is no overlap. So um, everything that's not in A is A complement, and that's the set 0, 1, 2, all the way up to positive 100. OK, A intersect A complement is saying what's the overlap between these two of course you can see there's a direct divide right here these are what's called disjoint sets there's no overlap and that is by definition a whatever's not in a is in a complement and vice versa so there can be no intersection if there is an intersection then you've defined the complement incorrectly so the uh, a intersect a complement there has to be nothing in it. So it has to be the empty set. And again, by definition, a union A complement, if, if, if it's not an A, then it's going to be an A complement. If it's not an A complement, it's going to be an A. That means if you union them together, you get everything possible. That is the universe set U. And now we have A union B complement. A union B is inside parentheses, so we're going to do that first. Um, I'm going to get rid of this A complement portion. You don't need it anymore. So A union B is first. A union B is everything in A and B. So this is all as in A. And then we have everything in B. So this yellow stuff is A union B. And all we have to find now is the complement of this set. Well, the complement is everything not in this set, which means it has to be all of this remaining stuff. This is a union B complement in orange here. And that's the set 51, 52, oops, 98, 99, 100. That is a union B complement. Okay, give it a try in number three.